ATI 84 Plus Calculator Essentials for AP Calculus. For my AP Calculus students, most of whom have a lot of experience with the TI Inspire calculators, I recommend using the TI 84 series calculators for different reasons, but one main reason. The things the calculators needed for are more easily done on a TI 84 series calculator. TI Inspire calculator, while a fine calculator, has layers of menus that take longer to negotiate and has numbers not quite so accessible. These things are 1. Graph a function in any window. Know how to change the viewing window to fit the function. 2. Solve an equation. I think the most commonly efficient way to solve an equation in a calculator is by graphing using the x-intercept method. 3. Find the derivative of a function for a given input value. And 4. Find the value of a definite integral. This video lesson will have step-by-step -step demonstrations. I strongly recommend that for maximum learning that you have your calculator out and that you actively follow along keystroke by keystroke. In addition to the four main skills mentioned earlier, there will be additional techniques to supplement your calculator experience. I will explain many of the nuances and idiosyncrasies that you should be aware of. Press the on button at the lower left of the keypad to turn on the calculator. Now we have to check to make sure we have a sufficiently updated operating system on our calculator. Press the second key at the upper left of the keypad. There's a blinking arrow at the upper left of the view screen. Press the plus key which accesses the memory submenu. Press enter at the lower right of the keypad. 2.55 MP stands for 2.55 math print. You're going to need to have an operating system of this version or later for what we need to do. Press clear to get to the home screen. In calculus we need to have our angles set to radians rather than degrees. To check that we press the mode key. We see that the calculator is in degrees mode on the third line down. We use arrows to move the blinking cursor over radian on the third line down and press enter. The calculator is now in radian mode. Press clear again to get to the home screen. Now we'll get to that first skill we need to learn so the calculator can do it for us and that would be to graph an equation. Press the Y equals or function editor key at the upper left of the keypad. We are now at the function editor view screen. We'll now enter an equation, y equals cosine squared x. This is how we'll do this. We press the open parentheses key just above the 8 key. Press the cosine key just above the open parentheses key. Press the x or variable key just below the mode key. Press the close parentheses key twice. And finally press the x squared key at the left of the keypad which puts the whole expression to the second power. This is how you have to enter cosine squared x in the calculator to get a proper result. Press the graph key at the upper right of the keypad. Next, related to graphing an equation, we're going to change the viewing window. We cannot see the curve of the graph in real great detail, so we'll zoom in on this graph by changing our window. We'll try to change the window into this limited area of the graph outlined by the little red rectangle. Press the window key, the second key from the left on the top row of the keys. These values constitute our standard viewing window x minimum of negative 10, x maximum of 10, y minimum of negative 10, and y maximum of positive 10. Now we're going to change the viewing window to get a closer look at the curve of the equation. We'll change x minimum to negative 1, x maximum to 3, y minimum to negative 1 and y maximum to 2. Press the graph key. We can see the critical values more clearly with this closer view. In addition to adjusting the window like this, there is the zoom box feature which allows for closer inspection as well. To get back to a standard window, you can press the zoom key, then press 6 for zoom standard. This gets us back to our standard viewing window. Now we're going to look at the second required skill, and that would be to solve an equation. The equation we'll solve is this one, cosine squared x equals x. 
A great strategy for solving this or any one variable equation is to put each side in the function editor, each side of the equation of the function editor, as a separate equation or separate function. Press the y equals key. Since one side of the equation is already entered, and that would be cosine squared x, we can enter the other side of the equation as the second equation in the line below in y2 equals x. Now we can press graph. We see the side for each function graphed in the same window. The solution to the equation will be the x value where these two graphs intersect. To better see the graphs of the functions, we go back to the window setting and enter the settings we had earlier. Those settings are x minimum of negative 1, x maximum of 3, y minimum of negative 1, and y maximum of 2. Press the graph key. We can see the point of intersection of the two graphs. And we can find that intersection by pressing the second key, then press the trace key. That's the key at the top of the top row, second from the right. Then press the 5 key. 5 is the intersection option in this calc submenu. Press enter the first time. Press enter for the second time. Then press enter for the third and final time. This is the intersection and the important number is the x value, 0.64171437. This x value, 0.64171437, is the solution to the equation cosine squared x equals x. And we box this in as our correct answer. There's another way to do this, what I've heard called the x-intercept method of solving equations. We get back to our function editor by pressing the y equals key. Now instead of graphing each side of the equation as a function like we did just previously, we solve one side of the equation by solving x from both sides of the equation. That equation is now cosine squared x minus x equals zero. Now enter this equation, now solve for zero is y equals cosine squared x minus x. Press the graph key. The x-intercept of the graph of this combined function is the solution to the equation. That's the x-intercept method. We find the solution by pressing the second key. Now press the trace key that accesses the calc submenu again. Press 2 for 0. The cursor is blinking to the right of the x-intercept below the x-axis. There is the left bound with a question mark. Use the left arrow on the keypad to move the cursor a few strokes to the left over to the left side of the x-intercept above the x-axis. And now after having moved the cursor, the cursor is blinking to the left of the x-intercept above the x-axis. Press the Enter key. Now we read right bound, meaning that the calculator is asking us to move the cursor back to the right of the x-intercept. Now we arrow to the right using the right arrow of the x-intercept. It should be just a few keystrokes. Now here's the blinking cursor to the right of the x-intercept. Press the Enter key. Now we see guess and the two inward facing arrows near the top of the viewing window. Press Enter the Enter key this last time. Here's the solution, x equals 0.64171437. So this is a very good method, the x-intercept method. Now we're going to learn the third thing on our list, and that's how to find the derivative at a point. We get to this home screen by pressing clear. We're going to solve this problem for the function f of x equals x over x squared minus 3x. Find f prime of negative 2. In other words, we're finding the first derivative function, then plugging in negative 2 for x. To find the derivative at a point, we press the math key. This is the math submenu. We can scroll down with the arrow down to see all the 12 items on the submenu. This is the item we're interested in, item 8, find the derivative at a point. Now later on we're going to get to the definite integral number 9. Press 8 for end derivative. This is the end derivative display. The cursor is blinking here in the denominator of the ddx. Here we enter x by pressing the x, or variable key, right below mode. Now the cursor is blinking here in the function area. To enter our function, we'll get the division bar by first pressing the alpha key. 
we see the alpha blinking in the function area. Now press the Y equals or function editor key at the upper left of the keypad. This is the math print division submenu. The keystroke sequence is the alpha key, then the Y equals key. Press the enter key. This is the fraction template ready for us to enter the fraction. And in the fraction template we enter X over X squared minus 3X. And we arrow once to the right and the cursor is now blinking here at the very right. Enter the input we wish to evaluate and that would be negative 2. Make sure you enter the negative sign here in the lower right of the keypad right below the 3 instead of the minus sign at the right of the keypad. It makes a big difference. Press the enter key. This is the answer. Negative point zero four zero 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 etc. one six. This is f prime of negative two. Now this last part, the the one and six after nine decimal places is, is a rounding error. This really amounts to one point six trillionths. This is a TI eighty four and TI inspire idiosyncrasy, these rounding errors. To place the answer into fractional form, enter negative 0 0.04, press the math key, press the enter key. This converts the decimal into a fraction. Press the enter key again, and this gives us our answer. And that answer in fractional form is negative 1 25th. This is the slope of the curve where x equals negative 2. Here's another problem. For the function g of x equals x times the square root of quantity 2x squared minus 7 fourths x, what is the equation of the tangent line where x equals 4? What do we need to solve this problem? Well, we need two things, a point and a slope. To get our point, we will plug our input value 4 into our original equation. This is, and I'll show you a good way to do that. First, press the 4 key then press the STO key at the left of the keypad and STO stands for storage then press the X key press the enter key now the value of 4 is stored for X now enter the function use alpha then the Y equals key to access the fraction utility press the enter key and our output value for an input of 4 our output value is 20 and that means that our point that we need is the point 4 comma 20. Next we'll find the derivative at a point and that point is 4 comma 20 by pressing the math key. Next press the 8 key to find the derivative at a point. Now enter the function into the template. And since 4 is stored for x we can just place x here at the far right. We could also just put 4 instead of the X. Press the enter key. The derivative or slope at this point is 10.7. This slope 10.7 we can call M sub T for the slope of the tangent line where X equals 4. So in point slope form our equation is Y minus 20 equals 10.7 times quantity X minus 4. So we box in our correct answer. The last thing we'll look at is finding a definite integral. This is the first problem we'll look at. Find the definite integral with limits of 0 to 2 of x times quantity x plus 2 to the ninth power dx. Press the math key. Press the 9 key to get the definite integral option. We now have the definite integral template. Enter the limits and the integral into the template. And the limits are from 0 to 2 and the integral is x times quantity x plus 2 to the ninth power dx. Press the enter key. This is our answer. 171,603.7818 which we box in as correct and that's all there is to it. One more problem which is again an application of the definite integral. Let's go back to our situation toward the beginning when we solve the equation cosine squared x equals x. When we graph these two equations together, each side is a function. This is what we got. 
the curve function is y equals cosine squared x and the line is the function y equals x. And here's the problem. Find the area bounded by the graphs of y equals cosine squared x and y equals x. The y-axis on the left and the intersection of y equals cosine squared x and y equals x on the right. The left limit is 0 and the right limit is the x value of the intersection which is 0.64171437. We get to the definite integral by pressing math key then the 9 key and the results of that are shown on the view screen at the right and that would be the definite integral template. Here's the integral entered into the definite integral template. That's dx on the right and I rounded the point 0.64171437 to just 0.642 to make more room to get it on the view screen. I normally don't recommend rounding until the final answer, but for purposes of uh, the viewing of this video, I made an exception to that. Press Enter. We get an area of 0.3547 units, which we box in as correct. And this was exactly the same rounded answer as when using all eight decimal places for the right or upper limit. So now we've covered the basics in this lesson, plus checking to put the calculator into radians mode and checking the operating system of your calculator. Uh, this, these skills, I hope you get a lot of repetition, can be very helpful to you as you go about the business of succeeding in your AP exam later this year. This has been TI-84 Plus Calculator Essentials for AP Calculus. Thanks for viewing.